everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be using the stack to store additional arguments during a function call. Now if you remember we talked about how you could use the first four registers R0 through R3 to pass the first four arguments to a function, but if you had additional arguments you actually have to use the stack to store these values so you can pass them to the function. So let's get right into it and let's see how we do that. I'm going to open up my CPU later, and I have the program that we created in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, feel free to go back and get to this point. And we have this program that's going to take two arguments, two numbers, and simply add them together inside of a function. So we have this add numbers function call that's going to add these two numbers, and then branch back to get out of the function, storing the return value into our R2 register. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this to instead add six numbers together so that the first four arguments are passed inside of our registers, but the last two we're actually going to be storing on the stack and passing those that way to the add numbers function. So let's get into this and let's see, we have our first argument and our second argument. Now remember, we have up through the R3 register to store our first four arguments. So let's just go ahead and add those. So I'm gonna do move, R2, and then let's just keep going with our convention. We'll do the immediate value three. This is gonna be our arg argument three. We'll do move, R3, the immediate value four, so now we've actually met the quota of registers that we can use for this function call. So now all of our other two values that we're going to be adding are going to have to be stored on the stack. So let me take our push operation right here and let's just modify it for this case. I'm going to move this up here since we're going to be modifying the stack. So I'm going to take this and let's just save our link register and make this last one match up accordingly. Now, I don't necessarily have to save this value, but if I was inside of a function, I would save the link register so that my program knows where to jump back to once I complete this code. But now we have our first four arguments, so let's add our last two arguments to the stack. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to allocate some space on the stack, and I can do this with the sub command. So I'm gonna do sub, do stack pointers, the destination register, then SP, and then I'm going to do the immediate value 8. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be passing two arguments on the stack, and each of these are going to be four bytes long. So the first four bytes is going to be the first variable, then the second four bytes is going to be the second variable, which is a total of eight bytes that I'm going to have to allocate on the stack. Next, I'm going to actually add my two values to the stack. And this is kind of interesting because we pass these on the stack in kind of reverse order of what you would think, but this is going to be the same in all ARM, the same in x86, and the same in a lot of different architectures, so you'll get pretty used to this. So we can do move, and let's just pick on the R4 register, and we'll add the immediate value 6, which is going to be the last argument, and then we can do store register, the current value in R4, and then we're going to store that into SP, so wherever SP is currently pointing to, that is going to hold our last argument. And then next, we actually want to store the fifth argument. So let's do move. We'll just pick on R4 again. We can reuse it. R4, the immediate value 5. And then we'll store our register to the next location on the stack. Store register, R4. And then we'll do stack pointer. But I'm actually going to offset this by four. So the first four bytes are going to be taken up here at the base address of stack pointer. And then we can offset this by four to store the immediate value five at the next four bytes available. So I'm going to do comma, the immediate value four. Now you may have noticed that I was actually subtracting from the stack pointer. Now if you're thinking of the stack, it's actually growing downward. So it's starting at higher memory addresses and then going to lower memory addresses. So if we want to allocate new space on the stack, we actually need to subtract for it. And then when we're done, we're going to add to the value of the stack pointer to get rid of those values that we previously allocated. So to do that, I'm going to come down here. So we're going to reset the stack pointer after we've done our arguments and actually made the function call. 
So the opposite of sub is going to be add. So add destination is SP, SP, and then we'll just do eight bytes again so we can get rid of the previous eight bytes that we allocated for. So this way we're using the stack, we're allocating some space up here, we're resetting it down here, and then when we pop off our link register, we previously pushed it up here so we're not affecting the stack in any way. So the next value that is popped off the stack will be the link register one more time. So now moving on, we actually need to change our add numbers function call so that we're adding all of these different numbers together since we have an additional four arguments that we're going to be using. Now the first four are going to be pretty easy. We've already got our R0 and R1 registers added together. So let's just add the R2 and R3. So we'll do add. R0 is our accumulator. R0. And then the next one is going to be R2. Then we'll do add R0, R0, and then R3, which is going to be our next argument. So now we actually have to go to our stack to get our next arguments. So let me get our fifth argument next. Let me scroll down here, give myself some space. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do load register, and we'll just use R4, and we'll just reuse this as a temporary register. And then we're going to get the value from SP, and then we're going to offset it by four. Now remember, SP offset by four is going to be the immediate value five, which is going to be our fifth argument and not our last argument, since we did push them in reverse order. So once we've loaded our register, we can add that value into our R0 register. So we'll just do add R0, R0, and then the fifth argument, which is now stored inside of our R4 register. And then we're going to do the same thing to get the last argument and add that value as well. Then one more time, I'm going to do load register. Just reuse R4. And then we're going to load the value that's in SP, which is going to be the last argument that we pushed in here, which should be the immediate value 6. And we'll just add that to finish this off. So I'm going to do add r0, r0, and then r4 one more time. So this looks good, and then we're going to branch out of our function after we finish this. So let's run this and see what this looks like. So now I'm going to compile and load this program. It looks like I didn't type anything wrong, so that's good. And I'm going to maneuver over to the current memory, and let's take a look at what the stack pointer is doing. If you see currently, it's just set to position 0. So let me put in stack pointer. So we can take a look at what it's pointing to right now. It just looks like some junk stuff, whatever. And let's go back to our disassembly and see how the stack pointer actually gets updated while we're going through and adding our values to the stack. So I'm going to go to our disassembly. Let's do step over. And you'll notice something interesting. First of all, the push instruction is already modifying our stack pointer. So if we take this and we look at it in signed decimal, you can see it's subtracting four already. So now our sub command over here is also going to be subtracting from the stack pointer, but the push and pop commands do those automatically. Now let's go over to memory and see that we have actually changed our stack pointer pointing to negative four. So let's go through and let's see what it looks like when we're changing and pushing our arguments to the stack as well. Now, first of all, let's just add our previous arguments, so R0 through R3 registers. So we'll do step over, step over, step over, step over. These are going to be our first four arguments. And now we're going to subtract eight bytes from the current stack pointer. So we'll do step over. Now you see our stack pointer is actually the value negative 12. So now we have actually allocated additional space on the stack so we can put our arguments in these new locations. So let's see what that looks like. We'll do step over, and then we're storing the immediate value 6. And now we're going to store the immediate value 5 as well. Step over, step over. We'll go back to memory, and let's see what the stack pointer looks like now. You see on the stack, we're going to be pointing to the next value, which is going to be 6. But we also have 6, which is going to be the last argument, 5, and then the other argument, which was the link register that we previously pushed onto here. So now we have all three of these additional values stored successfully on the stack. Now let's go back to our disassembly and let's see what this looks like inside of the function call. 
So I'm going to do step into so we can actually see the add numbers function at work. And we'll do step over, step over. We're adding our first numbers together. Step over. And now we're loading the value that's offset by four bytes from the stack pointer. So that's going to be the fifth argument that we're loading into the R4 register. I'm going to do step over. R4 was already the value five. And we are going to add that value five to our accumulator. We'll do step over. And now we're going to load the last argument from the stack, which is going to be the value six. And that is sure enough, put inside of the R4 register. Then we're going to add that to our final R0 register. And now we have our actual total. So let's step out of here. Now this is going to go to after the function call. And now we have our return value that we're going to be storing inside of the R2 register. Let me step over that. And now we're actually going to be resetting our stack. So we're going to be adding eight bytes to the stack pointer. So we get rid of those eight bytes that we subtracted that we allocated for two variables to be stored on the stack. So we'll do step over. Now we're set to negative four. So now the final allocation on the stack is going to be removed when we run this pop instruction. So step over. Now it's going to be reset to zero. And if we go back to memory, you'll see that we still do have these values stored on the stack, but now they're just kind of throwaway values since the stack is actually pointing here now. Now, if you notice, the last thing is that these addresses on the left-hand side are going to be negative numbers since they're actually going to be ending in ones. So remember your signed number conversions. And then as we go down here, these are going to be bigger and bigger values. So remember that the stack is actually growing downward while we're allocating these values. Thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we saw how we could use the stack to allocate additional arguments to call a function. Remember, we have to use the R0 through R3 registers to store the first four arguments, but then any subsequent arguments will actually need to allocate additional space on the stack. And then we have to reset the stack pointer once we're finished calling those functions. We also learned that the stack grows downwards and that the push and pop instructions actually automatically change the stack pointer depending on what operation they're doing. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ah, shoot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I messed that one up. <laughs>